Welcome back to the IBJJF podcast. My guest today is Adam Wardzinski. Adam is a world nogi champion. He's a European champion. And now he's a pan champion. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we got to talk about the pans final. That was one of the most incredible matches I think we've ever seen in competition. Such an, an amazing comeback. But let's start with the Europeans. You started 2023 at the Europeans. Also had an amazing run there. You did meet Felipe Andrew in the final of the Europeans as well at heavyweight. Ended up losing that match, but it was a great performance. Do you want to comment on the Europeans and how that first final with Felipe Andrew went? Uh, yeah, so like you said, I had a pretty good run at Europeans. Uh, I was coming from uh, winning that event a uh, year before. So I had like high hopes that I'm going uh, to I'm gonna do good this time as well. And I had uh, two tough matches before. I was able to uh, to get submissions in uh, both of them, and uh, I never fought uh, Felipe, but I kind of like know what to expect. I saw his uh, his fights. I I knew his style. Um, yeah, but he he did very very good job uh, breaking into into my guard and uh passing my god and i couldn't uh couldn't recover i mean i recover at the end of the fight but i couldn't uh couldn't score uh i was trying hard but just couldn't so i lost that, that one on points and uh then uh at the pants finals at the beginning we kind of went through the same thing so i was like oh no the nightmares happening again <laughs> Uh, but then I was able to I, I was able to recover and I felt uh, because the match was like high pace from the beginning uh, I felt that he uh, got tired a little bit so then I felt like all right it's a, it's time to like push the pace a little bit and give everything I have and uh, then I was able to like score once with the sweep he swept me back um uh, i swept him again and uh then i landed in a very good position to to start passing and i have a pretty good sequence uh when i'm passing like very tight straight to mount i used that one and then we had uh, we had tie and uh i i just heard lucas screaming like cross choke cross choke and he was showing a cross choke and i was like all right but i have to do it in a in a in the right time and uh then i kind of like slide it up a little bit to fake that i'm gonna go for the on bar uh, i saw the opening for the cross choke so i grabbed the cross choke and it was like legitly grabbed choke it, it wasn't just just to grab and uh then the, after like second or two the match finished and um, at first i was like thinking if, I, if i'm gonna get advantage for that or not but I felt it was it was pretty tight, and then I got uh, awarded with uh, with advantage, and yeah, and I got uh, and I got the the win. So that that was amazing feeling uh, after after such a such a great match. You know, uh, the w one thing is like is the victory, but also the the style of the victory, and also the battle we had. That was uh, that was amazing, and uh, I'm really glad that both of us we went there to fight actually yeah. not to like you know stole the fight or or win by like uh like something small you know we we both did like a lot we put a lot of work to um to get that victory you know so yeah that was like amazing match and uh it was so funny that so many friends wrote me like, oh, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> or uh, one, uh, one friend of mine wrote me that he was like watching that in bed and he, he got all sweaty watching the final from like get from the stress that he had to like change the cloths and change the bedding because, you know, it was always uh, like, yeah, it, it was stressful. It was stressful, I guess. Yeah, you, you made such a great point. You and Felipe both really went for it. You weren't trying to hold the match. You were really trying to score points and both trying to go for the submission. And Felipe is a competitor who always fights like that. Is he someone that you wanted to have a match with? I know he was competing at super heavy for a while, but when he dropped down to heavyweight, was he someone that you felt like you wanted to have a match with? 
Yeah, I always saw him fighting in, uh, in super heavy. And once he dropped to heavy, I was kind of sure that at some point we're going we're gonna to meet. And uh, actually, it happened really, really quick because uh, first time was European. So I think it was right after he made the decision to uh, drop down and cut to, cut to heavy. Uh, did I look forward to that? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I'm always down to fight, and I'm gonna fight whoever steps steps out, and um, this is this is how I am. But I'm I'm not gonna say I looked forward to that. You know, I, I knew from the beginning it's gonna be a like tough match and war. But you know, at the end of the day. It's a uh, it's a great thing that we had those those two matches and probably more to come. Uh, you know, like I, I think at some point, for for many people watching us, they they felt like gi matches can be really exciting. And this is what I always say: it's it's not about formula necessarily. It's not about gi or no gi. It's about style of the of the fighters and uh, and matchups some matchups are going to be like that some matchups are just going to be boring doesn't matter which formula you're going to you're going to pick so i'm happy that i i proved my point here yeah you definitely always put on exciting matches i believe with about 90 seconds left in the match it was 11-2 so do you remember what was going through your head down 9 points with only 90 seconds left being down such a big a big margin Oh yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I uh, not to be like too much of like a motivator or trying to be inspirational here, but before the fight, I had that like visualization in my head that I'm standing on top of the podium and I'm getting that gold medal. And I'm like, all right, but. It won't come easy. I'm sure it won't come easy. I will have to put a lot of work into that, and I'm, I'm gonna be really tired after that. That's, that's for sure. So, then when I started to lose, like it was nine to two, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, it's it's not going good. But then I felt like, all right, but what if the faith is is testing me right now? If I really want that. And if I keep pushing, I'm going to give everything here. I, I will still be able to pull that win. And then I was like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. And um, as I was able to, like, adjust to better control and I was able to start, like, scoring, once I get to the top, that position when I was able to, like, get the knee cut and then straight get straight to mount, I felt like, okay, the things are going my way now. I just have to be like really precise and I can't make any mistakes here. I can't get too much excited and stressed because then we're going to lose that position. So just like full focus and stay heavy on on top and no mistakes here. And I was like very like focused at that point. And yeah, (laughs) <laughs> this is this is what happened. I was able to 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 get to that mount, and then at the like last second, last two seconds, I was able to get that cross choke. I know the butterfly guard sweep is is really big for you. You've used it so many times in competition. But how many times do you think you've done that sweep to the mount transition to a submission attack? Is that like a whole sequence that you've done a lot as well? Yeah, it's a it's a sweet sequence that I use. If you study my my matches, you're gonna see me using that a lot. And um, I'm always saying that butterfly guard is such a great tool uh, when it comes to scoring points because uh, whenever you sweep, whenever you get to the top position, you're very tight. So you kind of like halfway to pass your opponent's guard. And uh, I'm using that sequence all the time. So it was something that was in my system. But uh, you know how it is under like stress when uh, when it's a moment like that, it's like getting that gold or coming short and getting silver. Sometimes you're getting stressed and you, you, you're making mistakes. 
So that was something I was like having in my mind, no mistakes now, just full focus and precision. And you did talk about Lucas Leitch being in your corner. He was coaching you not only to go for the submission at the end, but also to go for the mount position. You were kind of in a knee cut. It was hard to tell if you were going to try to pursue the knee cut or go to the mount. But once he started coaching, you definitely made the transition to the mount. Then you did the cross choke. How important was Lucas's coaching to your victory? Oh, yeah. I I made a post about it uh, at my media that he was kind of like man of the hour um, because he kind of like believed to the very end that we're going to be able to pull that victory. And um, he he knows my style. We we train yeah. a lot. Whenever I'm in uh, California, we train a lot. And uh, he knows my style and he knows kind of like what my capabilities are. And he kind of like used that knowledge and his passion to to guide me, guide me through it. And it was a, it was a big help. It, it was kind of like a, like giving me very clear um, very clear instructions what to do and those instructions are kind of like were, were the same as I had in my head like our idea of the way to get to that victory was kind of the same and when somebody's like telling you the same thing that you have in your mind you're like all right so I'm thinking right now this is the right thing to do now because I see that and he sees that from the from the side so it's probably the best option right now so yeah he gave me like he made my vision even more clear at that point do you think the pants title and the victory in the final is the pinnacle of your competitive career so far uh it is right now for sure um I don't I don't like to like look back so much to the past and and uh think too much about like what i achieved and what i didn't achieve that i just keep going you know of course i'm really happy from that title every title is a, is a it's like a gem in uh in my collection of of medals and achievements so it's great and i was looking for that title for a, for a long time it was a it was kind of dream of mine to to get that title and uh especially after like coming to pants for the first time i was able to get uh silver and i lost in a in a final by two advantages and i was like so close you know so close if if not those two advantages who knows maybe i i would have that title in my pocket um uh, right away and that would be amazing as well like doing pants for the first time and achieving the title uh especially considering that i back back then i had such a such a great run as well um but you know at the end of the day it gives some additional taste to that title that i came up short two times two times i got silver both finals i lost by advantages and now finally it happened so you have three major titles now as a black belt, and those titles are very, very difficult to come by. There's so many amazing competitors. There's always new athletes coming up. That's true. Do you have any advice for competitors who maybe they're on the cusp of winning a major title or they're pretty close, but they keep falling short? Do you have advice for them for what they should do to keep moving forward in pursuit of that title? I think actually I have four because I have also uh, European snow gi. Yes. I won the absolute okay. last year. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, I think... The, the thing is that if, if, you're, if you're there, you're already competing and you have that like competition mindset, you're always training for competition and, and you know, you have, you have to be looking for those titles, you know, it's, there's, there's, no, there's no other reason you're there. So I think it's, it's about just, just about pushing you know it's, it's just about staying like persistent and you know sooner or later some titles gonna gonna come your way you just have to like show up to those tournaments of course it's a it's a big struggle to make to make the trip to you know like like you know pay for your accommodation and stuff of course it's it's a struggle but if if you pick that way 
uh, you pick the way of an athlete, you already know that. You you already know that you have to you have to like make that struggle. So you know it's just about showing up consistently, fighting with the with the best guys, and you know taking your chances. You put on some of the best matches of 2023 thus far. You've had such a great run this year. What other tournaments can we expect to see you in, in 2023? So uh, for sure, Wilds. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip Brazilian Nationals this year. It's another big dream of mine to win that one. So for sure, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up there at some point. But Wilds, for sure. And uh, maybe some some small tournaments on the way on the way, maybe some small tournaments after as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna see uh, about no gi season. Uh, World no gi, probably. Uh, I'm gonna try to to make it to pants. I never I never did pants no gi. Uh, I missed that title as well. So that that's an idea for now. Well, thanks so much for your time today. Congrats on such an incredible performance at the Pans. It was really epic to watch. I think everyone can agree on that. Do you have any anyone you want to thank or any final words before we sign off? Uh, well, so I want to I want to thank uh, all my fans for for support. I want to thank all the people that uh, shoot me shoot me a message uh, after that Pans. I I was really like flooded with uh, with messages. It was very hard to to like respond to all of them uh also i need to give a uh, like big credit to my wife she's a nutritionist and she made my wake up like perfect uh i, I didn't have to stress at all about uh, about my way so yeah thank you thanks again adam for your time thanks everyone for watching we'll see you guys soon for another episode take care